admit it, 3D prints look kind of crap. The 3D printed aesthetic of layers stacked upon layers isn't actually something that is desirable in any way. We just put up with it because that's how the technology works. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about ways you can go about turning something like this into something like this. And you can do it using this. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. So believe it or not, one of the first videos I ever did on this channel was a video about smoothing 3D prints. And I did it using acetone in a rice cooker to vapor smooth ABS. Yes, it is as ridiculous and dangerous and stinky as it sounds, and it's not something I would recommend doing these days. That's just one technique out of many to make 3D prints look better than they come out of the machine, because as we all know, the technology prints layer by layer, and depending on your orientation, those layers can be really obvious and not look that great. So in this video, I'm gonna outline different ways you can make your 3D prints look professional, starting from the easiest and simplest, all the way up to the hardest, but arguably the best. And we'll start with the different technologies you might wanna consider. You're gonna print in FDM slash FFF or resin. Now when it comes to high detailed polished models, resin is the way to go. People all around the world are already using resin 3D printers to produce miniatures for their D&D campaigns that they can just paint straight off the machine after post-processing and they're good to go, or even highly detailed parts for cosplay. So you'd think that resin is the way to go if you want prints to look really smooth. And it makes sense, right? A resin 3D printer operates at a much finer layer height than filament 3D printers, and the screens they use for the MSLA process are all the way up to like 12K resolution now, which means that those individual pixels or voxels are pretty much indiscernible when it comes to detailed models that you can print. But that doesn't mean you should only choose resin 3D printers if you want highly detailed prints. One issue is UV resistance. If you wanna design something that's gonna be exposed to the sun a lot, then you shouldn't just use a raw resin 3D print because the print is actually created by exposing that liquid resin to UV light, which polymerizes and hardens it. And if you keep exposing that print to UV light, it'll actually become brittle and over cure and actually can discolor and warp. There's also limitations in print size. You're unlikely to come across a resin 3D printer, at least in the hobby space, that can print as large as a comparably priced FDM or FFF 3D printer. Which means for me, when it comes to larger prints, I want to finish, I'll choose FDM. But when it comes to small things like miniatures and figures, I'll go with resin. But regardless of which process you choose, you cannot escape the fact that you need to do a little bit of hand finishing and you'll definitely need to use some paint. Before I discuss any techniques, we need to talk about safety. If you are doing any sanding, any painting, any vapor smoothing, please don't, anything like that, you need PPE. At a bare minimum, you need some sort of respirator or mask. And also I highly recommend a full face goggle, not just safety glasses, because when you're sanding fine microplastics everywhere, they can easily get underneath the goggles and into your eyes. If you rub your eye, for example, suddenly you've got bits of grit in there that you can't easily get out. I like these because they have the, they're like goggles, they've got the, the silicon edge to make sure your eyes are protected. But at a bare minimum, you do need face protection and a respirator because you don't want to be breathing any of this in. You don't want to breathe paint in, you don't want to breathe like fine paint dust in, you don't want to breathe plastic dust in, don't do it make sure you're always wearing some sort of respirator. So what is finishing a print? Well, the idea is that we want to remove that stair-stepping artifact to make the surface look smooth and give it a paint or finish of some kind. So we're effectively smoothing our 3D print, but you don't want to over-smooth things in such a way that it removes all detail. And there are several different ways you can smooth a 3D print. You can sand a surface, you can melt a surface, and you can coat a surface. As I mentioned at the start of the video, acetone vapor smoothing used to be the method of choice for smoothing ABS prints, but you can actually use a wide range of solvents to chemically smooth FDM 3D prints. Not every plastic will be chemically smoothed, and some of them can only be smoothed with really dangerous solvents, but there are filaments on the market like PVB, which can be fairly easily smoothed with fairly safe solvents like ethanol. The downside of chemically smoothing your print is you'll generally lose all those sharp edges. So if you have a detailed model that has details that you want to preserve, then chemically smoothing it will kind of just blob everything together and it will be smooth, 
but it won't be sharp. It's like looking at a print through a, a fuzzy lens. The second easiest way to smooth your prints is to coat them with something. This will work with both resin and FDM 3D prints. There are dedicated products on the market which are like thick two-part epoxies that are designed to wick between the layer lines of a 3D print and just kind of generalize the outer surface into a smoother result. Personally, I think those dedicated products are kind of overpriced, at least in Australia. So if I want to smooth the print by coating it in something, I will simply use a two-part epoxy. I try not to use a fast cure like five minutes. I actually go with a one hour cure or even 24 hour cure epoxy to make sure it can wick into all the surfaces and really settle in there before fully curing. But something that's been developed by some really innovative people out there in recent years is to do this same process, but instead of using two-part epoxy, you use 3D printing resin. What you do is you get your 3D printing resin and you bulk it up using something like talcum powder, and then you brush it onto that 3D print, making sure it's in between all the layer lines and settling in between all the cracks to smooth out the print. And then you use a UV light source to cure it in place and from there, you can do your post-processing as normal to quickly and easily get that surface looking nice and smooth. I think this is a fantastic way of smoothing over really large surfaces really quickly. Like for example, if you 3D printed a helmet for cosplay and the con is next weekend, then it's a great way to do that. But again, just like acetone vapor smoothing and chemical smoothing, I think that this process can sort of round over edges and result in a less sharp 3D print, depending on what kind of geometries you're trying to preserve. So I've talked about melting surfaces smooth, we've talked about coating surfaces smooth, but now it comes down to, I would say, the best method of smoothing surfaces, but by far the most time consuming. That is to sand your surfaces smooth. The ancient technique of bog sand prime goes back through the generations. You can make anything look mirror smooth with enough effort in your bogging, your sanding, and your priming. The first thing to keep in mind is to save yourself as much sanding as possible and to print your parts in the optimum orientation for part quality. You want to avoid that stair-stepping on gentle sloped curves and instead rely on layer height to transfer as much quality as possible into the print. Which means we have parts like this with subtle gentle curves. I print these parts like this and I rely on the layer height to transfer as much quality as possible into the print. And I will print at like 0.12 millimeter layer height on an FDM 3D printer because the extra time spent printing means less time I have to spend sanding and it's well worth it. Once the parts are printed, I take them off the machine and I remove the bulk of any support material or any brims or rafts and that kind of thing using a pair of side cutters fairly roughly. And then I'll prep the surface with some really coarse 60 grit sandpaper. This stuff is really aggressive and especially on PLA plastic, you can easily overdo it and it gets sort of fluffy. It can even start melting. But the purpose of this isn't to smooth the print as such, but it's to add lots of scratches and detail on the surface so that this stuff sticks really well to it. This is automotive spray putty or spray bog and it is magical stuff. I don't care what brand you use, but the purpose of it is to fill in gaps and you put this stuff on thick. You go over the part, make sure it sits in, try not to get drips, but go pretty thick, let it dry, maybe even do a second coat. The whole purpose of this is to get into every nook and cranny of that 3D print between every layer line and to harden. Because after this is fully hardened, I come back in with 120 grit sandpaper and I sand it almost completely away. Because if you think about it, we're trying to smooth the surface. We're not trying to make the surface thicker in any way. So what the spray putty does is it gets into those nooks and crannies between those layer lines and we sand back anything that's above that and you only leave the stuff that's in those gaps. And as you go, you might see areas that are a little bit rougher. That's fine, just give it a second hit of this. Go again until you're happy with the result. And so only once I'm happy with the smoothness of the part at this stage, then I'll hit the part with a primer. And then if I'm really, really keen for a super, super smooth surface, I'll hit the primer with some 400 grit sandpaper, which gives you a smooth to the touch surface, which then you can apply your paint. Personally here in Australia, I'm a big fan of the MTN range, the Montana paints. Uh, you can get these at Officeworks. They have a full range. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but it's pretty handy. And the trick for good painting is good securing of your parts because there's no point like taping them in place and then painting them only to have them fall on the ground while they're still wet and ruining all of your hard work. So I've actually found after a lot of trial and error that cheap double-sided foam tape is a really, really effective way of securing parts in place. 
So I'll get to that cheap double-sided foam tape, rip off a bit, put it on the rear side of your part, which remember we haven't sanded because there's no point, no one's going to see it. And then I'll stick it down to any bit of scrap I have. So maybe a bit of scrap wood, a bit of scrap acrylic, doesn't matter, as long as it holds it in place. And just like with sanding, make sure you're wearing your PPE when you're painting because the aerosols on these are not so good to breathe in. And the thing about painting is you need to wait for a good day to paint. Don't try to spray paint when it's raining. Don't try to spray paint when the humidity is really high because the parts won't dry properly. At a bare minimum, you need a dry day, but a warm dry day is perfect for spray painting to the point where you might want to consider having a small area in your garage with a heat lamp and a fan to artificially create a warm dry environment to make sure your parts dry properly and that's how you make your 3d prints not look like 3d prints it's a lot of work isn't it which is why most people don't bother doing it but if you bother doing it for your print that you want to look amazing for that upcoming convention or whatever you're doing then it's worth the effort. And I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments below on how you finish your models. Do you have any tips and tricks to share on getting that perfect finish on your 3D printed part? Because I've learned all this from others and I'd love to learn from you in the comment section below. Thanks for watching guys, bye.